I try to fly as much as I possibly can. It's my passion, it always has been. I average about a thousand flight hours a year and everything from Super Cubs and helicopters to, to Boeings. And by doing that, I feel like it gives me a unique insight into what a pilot actually needs. No fluff, no frills, but what solves a, a real problem. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. All right, top five don'ts. Number one, no sticky mounts outside the airplane. I mean, sticky mounts are great, and 3M VHB, the adhesive they use, the stuff's amazing. Outside an airplane, we have a couple things. One, oil. I haven't seen an airplane yet that doesn't have a little oil on it. Um, two, temperature. So, you know, it can get really cold, not even that high, and that'll cause that VHB to come off at some point. Number two, no suction cups outside the airplane. Suction cups, another great tool, but the problem is suction cups, the principle they work on is air and the volume of air, and as we climb, that changes. So for that reason, suction cups never go outside the airplane. Our third reason, no tethers, okay? We all like to keep that really, you know, awesome new GoPro we bought. We don't want to lose it. We don't want it to fall off our airplane. So we tether it, and if, if you tether it to your airplane, that $400 GoPro might do $30,000 worth of damage to your wing, okay? So what I recommend is don't tether your GoPro. Never mount it in front of something that could be catastrophic. We never ever mount a GoPro to any movable control surface. Make sure that anywhere I mount it, if it were to flop over on the mount and stay attached to the airplane, it can't jam a control surface. And then if you tether it, you increase the risk of it getting into a control surface also and jamming it, but you also guarantee that you'll do some kind of damage to your wing as the camera bounces. So I recommend not flying, A, mount your cameras where they won't fall off. B, don't fly over places that if the camera fell off would cause catastrophic or potentially catastrophic damage to someone on the ground. Number four, uh, don't overdo it. So what I see a lot of beginners do is they go out and they buy four or five new GoPros because they've seen uh, great YouTube videos with these guys that have ton of, tons of experience. Oftentimes they come from a professional video background. Um, so they know how to operate all this stuff. And then somebody that's never used a GoPro before is learning to fly, is now trying to deal with four cameras and learn to fly at the same time. That's task saturation at its uh, finest there. So I like to recommend start with one. And then when you get that and you get your workflow figured out, add a few more cameras. And the last and most important thing is don't do anything for the camera that you wouldn't do without it. And this has some grim consequences that, that you don't have to look far to find examples of, um, some that I've dealt with personally and uh, feel very strongly about. So if you put a camera on your airplane, I actually try to back it off a bit. If I'm flying for the camera, I try to do less than I would do without the camera. If I'm gonna do a landing somewhere off airport with a camera, I go somewhere that's less challenging than where I go without the camera, just to make sure that I'm not allowing the camera to influence my decision making. They have the nickname Idiot Magnets, and they've earned it when people cater to the camera and they back and they try to do things that they wouldn't normally do.